everybody. So a couple of weeks ago, I switched from my Sony a7S III to a Lumix S52X as my primary camera. Why the switch? No reason. We love Sony on this channel. And one of the things in which the Lumix is objectively superior is its capability to do direct to SSD recording. It's great, I love recording straight to SSDs, they're much better media to work with than SD cards, and especially those god-awful CF Express cards, but it got me thinking. See, the way you would normally record to an SSD on a conventional camera is you would have an SSD mount somewhere on your cage, and then you would have the SSD attached to that, and you have a cable running from the drive to the camera, you have to cable manage that, this whole thing takes up space on your cage, it's just not a great experience compared to something like what cinema cameras do, where they have a dedicated slot for their proprietary media, and it just goes in there and it's out of sight, and it doesn't really interfere with the rest of your rig, which is basically what I was looking for. Now, after doing a little bit of research, there was one solution that showed initial promise, which was the ProBlade system by SanDisk. They have these cool little NVMe mags that have a proprietary connector, because of course they do. So we're not using the SanDisk ProBlade because, as far as I can tell, the only real accessory in the ecosystem right now is the Condor Blue Handle, which looks really cool, but also feels like a little bit of an ergonomics nightmare if you're trying to use it as an actual handle. But also, I cannot really recommend anyone get invested into a proprietary ecosystem, which appears to just be a pin-to-pin -pin adapter for the sake of selling you additional accessories. I'm gonna have to 3D print an SSD mag system, aren't I? So after a little bit of further research, I came across the Pro SSD system that DJI has in the Ronin cameras. It's basically a two-part solution where they have the Pro SSD mount, which has a Type-C connector inside of it, and then the mags themselves have a Type-C female, so that when it slides into the mount, it basically clicks into the port and is good to go. Now, the way DJI actually does it is they have a CF Express slot on the camera and the mount plugs into that, which, best I can tell, they just use the CF Express interface to do a PCIe handshake with It doesn't matter for the, for the purposes of this video. The Type-C connector is definitely the way to go. And the way I designed this was the mount itself is basically just a fancy cable holder. It doesn't really do much beyond securing the drive in place. And then the mag is this little NVMe adapter board, which is the same chip they use in all of those NVMe enclosures you can find on Amazon with some 3D printed shell and a heatsink. And here's how you can make your own. First, you wanna to go to chadssd.com. That is real, that is a real website. When you go there, there's gonna be a big old download STLs button. Click the button, it's gonna download your STLs as per the text on the button. And when you unzip it, there's gonna be two versions of the design. There's gonna be a Lumix Tilta version, which is the one that I'm using for my setup, which is the Lumix S52 or S52X with the Tilta half cage that has these M3 screws at the bottom meant to attach the HDMI bracket, but instead it's going to be attaching our sick and awesome SSD mount. If you're not using a Lumix Tilta setup, then there's going to be a general file, which uses these conventional small rig quarter 20 screws, which you can find pretty much anywhere and attach to pretty much anything. Once you have downloaded and printed the designs, there's a couple more components that we're going to need. I'm going to attach the full shopping list for AliExpress, which is where I got all my stuff from, you can get basically all of these components from Amazon. They're just going to be slightly more expensive, but they will ship faster. One thing I really hate about Alex was how long it takes to ship, but it's dirt cheap, which is one of the goals for our non-proprietary SSD mag system. All right, first, let's get our drive ready. I'm using the Samsung 990 Pro. It's a little bit more expensive than usual, but you can find something like a Crucial P3 for about 60 bucks, which brings the total price of one of these mags well under $100. Next, we need our NVMe to Type-C adapter plate, the heatsink with the thermal pad, 3D printed parts for the enclosure, and four 6mm M2 screws. First, take the adapter board and slide it into the housing. It's gonna fit very neatly into its own little insert. Next, let's get our SSD and void that warranty, baby. Take the thermal pad and the heatsink and uh, put them aside because we need to secure the drive first. So slide that into the slot take the screw and screw it in behind the drive. 
Next, peel the both sides of the thermal pad, align it with the rounded walls on the housing, and the heatsink is gonna fit right in. Next, let's take our two other pieces, remove the support, and these two have these little tiny teeth that are going to hold the heatsink in place because it's not secure to anything. So let's attach them, grab our screws, and screw them into the top for the rear piece and into the bottom for the front piece. And the mag is done. Look at it. Look at this sexy little boy. For the mount, we're going to need two 4mm screws and two 6mm screws. We're going to need the body and the back plate that we printed. We're going to need a spring that you can salvage from a school pen, all of the little boys, and the 90 degree cable. The cable is going to fit into the mount kind of like this, and then it's going to be secured by the back plate. The problem is because of the tolerances, I couldn't make it fit 100%, so we're going to need some hot glue. First, slide the mag into the mount with the cable attached so that you can actually figure out the positioning of the mag. Squirt some hot glue on the back of the connector, get it into its slot, then plug the mag into the cable. Push it as far as it will go and let the hot glue settle for a bit. Cut the hot glue residue from the bag. Now you can slide the mag out of the body. Now take the spring and cut it in half. Next, take the button piece and slide it into the slot so that it lines up like this. Next, take the spring and squeeze it between the two, two little pillars on both parts. Now you should have a spring-loaded button. Next, take the hook and insert it such that the cutout lines up with the pillar on the side. Next, take the gear and slide it in between the two pieces in a way that has the button all the way up and the hook all the way down. It's gonna fit, I promise. And now you have a working mechanism that's a little wobbly. The wobble is gonna be fixed once we attach the back plate because it's gonna slide into the detent on the hook and it's gonna have a nice straight motion. As you can see, the hook works perfectly. Now let's attach the screws. The long ones go into the front, the short ones go into the back. And now the SSD mount is ready. You can try it with the mag. You see it goes in, the button pops up, and you cannot pull it out unless you apply enough force to break the thing. But if you press the button, it's going to eject nicely. Now the mag itself is pretty cool, and in the same way that the DJI one does, you can plug a cable directly into it and then directly into your laptop and edit off of the drive. But if you've used more than one of them on a shoot, then you still have the problem of managing multiple drives and editing off of them simultaneously. Which is an issue the ProBlade system actually solved pretty well. They have this little four drive sort of editing bay, which I thought was really cool. And also very easy to make. So this is what it looks like. It basically works exactly like the one from ProBlade where you just slide your mags into it until it clicks and then you can edit off of all four of them at full 10 gigabit speed. Now for the editing bay, we will be using this four-way hub by Mini Sopuru. This is what it looks like. We're gonna be using four Type-C cables with a straight connector, our good old friend hot glue, and the two 3D printed pieces, the main body and the top cover. First, slide the hub through a hole that's going to be a lot more elegant in your version than my box cutter design, and line it up in a way that makes the pores accessible. Next, plug the cables one by one so that it looks kind of like this. Grab the cables, route them around the pillars, and secure them like this. Next, take one of your mags and line it up with the cable to figure out where it needs to be positioned. Let's tuck all of the four cables in and let's start applying the hot glue. You want to squirt some glue on the sides and the bottom of the cable, then slide it into the pillar and then line it up with the mag. Once it's secure, let the hot glue settle and then you can unplug it. Repeat the step for every one of the four cables. And once that is done, take the top cover and this one just kind of snaps on. There's not really a clever attachment here. And your four drive editing bay is done. One thing I thought of after the video was recorded was getting a bunch of these adhesive skid protectors, putting them on the underside of the bay such that it doesn't slide as easily. And that's it. Now you have your very own SSD mag professional recording setup that is super cool. 
incredibly convenient, very cheap, and honestly quite durable. I'm recording this video on one of these mags right now. The only thing that I would really suggest you do differently from what I did is to not print with PLA. Use ABS or something that is more temperature resistant because the NVMe drive and the heatsink, they do get quite toasty. And with PLA, you can actually get to the point where you can deform it if you press on like the bottom of it too hard. Other than that, I am extremely happy with how this turned out. Uh, super nice, super useful. I hope you find it super nice and super useful as well. Thank you guys so much. I know it's been a while, but there's been a lot of cool stuff in the works that's coming to this channel very soon. So remember to hit subscribe, you know, assault the like button, comment in the comments down below in the comments section. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, they have been watching you for a while now.